to the um, council meeting on the annual plan, and um, if you'd like to present your submission, that would be great. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, councillors, it, it's Friday afternoon. You've had a long week. Uh, you're probably all flagging a little bit, and I thought the two things I could probably do that cheer you up a little bit, apart from making sure you had a tea break, um, was firstly to say that Green the Rubble is delighted to be a friend and ally of the City Council, while still being fiercely independent, of course, but we really value the support that the Council has given to us in response to the initiatives that we took after the September 2010 and subsequently February 2011 earthquakes. Uh, we're a community project. We're, we're proudly a community project, but we've been supported by the City Council to do it well. So firstly, a thank you. And I can say that with some confidence, because you very generously entered into a three-year funding agreement with us last year, which I'm sure you're honouring. <laughs> so on the basis that our funding from the Council is unknown, then what I thought I should do as my other contribution to the afternoon is to show you a few quick pictures and tell you a quick feedback on what we've achieved this year, so that when you travel around the city and talk with colleagues and council officers and others, you can say, oh yes, that's one of the green rubble gardens, isn't it? Hmm because we've actually got quite a few of them. So if I'll run quickly through some pictures and see if that's going to be uh, a useful illustration to use your couple of minutes on this topic. Greening the rubble. We're a charitable trust. We make temporary gardens. And the first of our sites, it does seem a long time ago, was built after the, Feb after the September earthquake and disappeared into the red zone following the uh, 2011 earthquake. And it emerged from the red zone full of wildflowers, a rather nice emergence. So that was the uh, garden where Asco used to be on the corner of Victoria and Salisbury. And of course, that's been redeveloped. It's one of the first, I think, fair to say, attractive buildings of the redevelopment. So all credit to the McFarlane family for not only offering the site in the first place to allow us to get started, but on putting something back into the urban fabric that at least is interesting. We've now reached our 21st garden which is not too bad for a community group that had no idea when they took on the first project that they were going to move on for, for so long and, and to such complexity. We're starting a build on a project in Columbus Street. I'm not going to tell you what it's going to be because it's a surprise. We've got all the design sorted, all the materials sorted, most of the funding sorted. And that project involves a link-up between Green the Rubble and another project that came out of the earthquakes. So we thought it was very appropriate to celebrate our 21st project by getting together with Crack for Christchurch, because Crack for Christchurch make mosaics out of the broken domestic crockery of the earthquake. What a nice team up. So there's going to be a great project taking shape in Colombo Street quite soon, which I hope you'll enjoy seeing. This year, we've returned five of our early sites to their owners so that they can be redeveloped, so that the, the rebuild can be underway. They're listed there. Our second built site was on St. Asaph Street. Um, made a car park, slightly less ugly. Our third or fourth site was at Pico, where the Whole Foods store used to be. Mm -hmm. We made a site opposite Alice Video in Tuam Street. We did a, a, a secret music room. It was a little back section. It's the only one we've done that's off the road. And had a piano installed in it by Gapfiller to add to the fun. That music room site on Sydney has gone back to its owner. And then most recently, we've been moving materials off our site on the corner of Salisbury and Madras because that site has changed hands and the new owner will redevelop the site. So farewell to those gardens. But the key thing about our gardens is that the materials they're built with are relocatable. Mm. So we're actually able to take one garden, dismantle it and move it to a new place in a completely new configuration. But we've not thrown anything away in the process. We're very frugal. We get materials, we keep using them as long as we can. And of course, our stock of plants that started off when they were given to us this big are now this big. So actually, we can add a lot more greenery than we used to. Examples of that, the project we share with Gap Filler, near to the cathedral on the corner of Gloucester and Columba, known as the Sound Garden, and uh, two projects on Peterborough Street, one of them opposite the library, and the other one next to the new Art Central facility, which you may have seen, a very good craft gallery. Mm. So those have been built with recycled material. We've taken gardens apart, we've put them on a new site. Several of our gardens continue in use. We're not under pressure to move off them. So there's a simple but quite funky little site in New Brighton. There's the site, which is rather well camouflaged by the wildflowers there, but the, one of the, the um, best known of our sites 
In fact, so well known that uh, everybody wants it to belong to them. Most recently, I saw some posters from Gapfer that are showing pictures of this site, so I've got to slap their wrists. But this site, this site is the Coffee Zone kiosk on Columbus Street in Sydenham. We're told by the local business association this has been a significant contributor to the revitalization of Sydney. And on the right, one of our food growing areas. This is a community food garden in Fitzgerald Avenue. Then we had a rather, rather nice success earlier this year. And can I um, credit my colleague Jonathan, who's sitting behind me here, for coming up with not only a great design, but getting it built on time and then winning a silver distinction at Ellerslie with it. It's gorgeous. So congratulations gorgeous. for that Love because it. that's a, it's a really nice project. And it's built as a relocatable garden. So we're going to put that back into the Restart Mall, which is a nice arrangement. So thank you to any members present to help us out with that, because it was really good to be able to know that we built it for Ellerslie, but it didn't get thrown away afterwards. It gets reused. We had an interesting new partnership, a very challenging and actually quite expensive project. And we got a bit of taxpayer money into this one because the Department of Conservation came to the party. And we built a project that's proving very popular with young people. I mean, very young people, the ones who like to paddle. Well, I know most of you like to paddle, actually, but the ones who admit it are mostly <laughs> little. Some of the skeptics. So this is, this is a, a, an artificial braided river. It's a pumped braided river that recirculates water across um, a stony area. Lots of different plantings, representative of Canterbury, a great little project, much enjoyed. And it's on Crown land, so we're going to have to see how long it lasts and whether it gets subsumed by a building site before too long, but it's a, a lovely addition to the East Frame. And my colleagues today, including our volunteers behind, I ought to mention, we, we invited Jonathan to come in support, and he said, well, I'll bring whoever's volunteering with me today. Can I just mention to you that his volunteers today include a woman from Britain who's moved here recently because her partner's come here with one of the, the construction companies. A woman sitting next to us from New York whose partner's come here to work and a woman on the right who enjoyed volunteering so much previously that she met a lad here and she's come back to join him. And she's from Switzerland. <laughs> so can I just say thank you to our volunteers? <laughs> and, and each week, people come and volunteer and try and take part. And they're not just locals, they're also people from all over the world who are concerned about what's happening in Canterbury and want to help out. So this project, Green Roofs, there was a lot of rhetoric, wasn't there, just after the earthquake about, oh yes, we have a green city will have things like green roofs. These are actually three of the first green roofs you'll see in Christchurch, and it's just a demonstration site, and we're still waiting for the commercial world to start putting green roofs on their buildings. But that site on uh, Cranmer Square is worth a visit. Year ahead, we're going to look in the central city and in the suburbs. We are concerned about sites in the south and the east where local residents have got plenty of open spaces and would rather like some of these gardens. And we mm. hope with your encouragement, we don't get tied just to the central city, but that we can do work beyond the central city with your support. I, I've asked the mayor about this and I've asked your officers about it and they said they don't see a problem with this. It's getting a lot harder to find sites in the central city, ladies and gentlemen. As you probably noticed, it's a sea of cars. We would like you, we endorsed points made earlier by Ryan Reynolds a couple of days ago. We think you need to think hard about incentives for the owners of sites mm. to make them available for public benefit. And public benefit is more than car parking. Mm. I know there's a pressure commercially to provide car parking, but you'll make such a boring, unattractive, hostile central city if it's eaten by cars. Don't do it. And the final point, I think it is clear the city is going to be in transition for some while yet. Yeah? We do appreciate your support for our work. We hope you can help us to help the city. And we've really enjoyed the opportunity to be involved so far. Thank you. Thank you. Paul. Just want to say thank you very much. You, uh, your group has actually helped put uh, Christchurch on the world map mm -hmm. as a place to visit. And we look at uh, New York mm -hmm. Times, number two in the world of places must visit, and the Lonely Planet, number six. And, and it is organisations like yourselves that have come through and done some really creative things and shown actually what resilience is all about and how people bounce back and create some fun in a, in a, a place of devastation. Mm -hmm. so I just want to say thank you very much to, and to all your crew and the work you did to actually help us get restart uh, looking the way that we opened. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Anything else? No? Well, look, thank you for your presentation. Yeah. It's great to see um, the collection of photographs. Um, yeah, I used some of them myself uh, when I gave my talk overseas last week, so um, it's much appreciated. Love what you do. Thank you.
forever. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Have a good weekend when it arrives. Same goes. <laughs>